today's topic is about gut health. Uh, not only uh, is it so important for our gut, but for our immune system. Now, can you imagine uh, sitting at a, a party and going out and you're talking to a friend and you say, hello, Bob, uh, how's your gut doing today? He's going to look at you like you're crazy. And he's going to say, why? Wow, I guess I'm feeling okay. I just thought I would ask. You know, this is this is a topic that really no one talks about at a cocktail party. Uh, people just don't talk about their gut. And this is something that we really need to start talking about because the more you understand about your gut, the healthier you're going to be and the longer you're going to live. And I'll tell you, I'll make you a promise. You're going to prevent a lot of diseases. Your immune system is going to become a lot stronger. You're going to resist viruses and bacteria that other people are getting that you won't. Uh, you're going to feel better. You're going to sleep better. Uh, you're just going to be a better person. So I want to say hello to all our people out there all across the world, from Ireland to Calgary, to Canada, to Israel, uh, way out there in Hong Kong, to the Philippines, uh, actually way out there to Alaska. Uh, we just want to say uh, hello. We love you very much. So let's get right into it, okay? I have some sources I'm going to go and refer, refer to because I really don't want to miss a lot, but I am going to touch on a few different things. Uh, when it comes to our gut, realize we're looking at a tube that goes right down from our mouth into the esophagus, into our stomach, into the small intestine, large intestine. It makes its way back out of the rectal area. But as these foods go through, things are happening. Things are getting absorbed. Um, so I want to bring out a couple very important things I just don't want to miss uh, when it comes down to this. But remember, we're looking at the microflora of our gut. And basically, we know that the probiotics in our gut is the, the, the strength of our immune system. It's 80% of our immune system. Yes, it is. It's almost 80% of our immune system. And um, this gut has a lot to do. There's a lot of work to do. This gut is where everything starts because you know how they say the gut-brain barrier the gut and the brain work together that, you know, you may not only think or kind of feel from your gut, but it really sometimes your intuition and all the good things start first in your gut. And that's true. But the key thing with the good probiotics is that it keeps the bad stuff away. And I'm talking about the bad stuff, like the bad bacteria, the bad viruses, these probiotics, there's a trillion of them. And they're just out there trying to keep that flora strong, trying to keep it healthy. Uh, because everything is united in the entire body with your gut, everything. So we realize probiotics prevent harmful bacteria, which we already know, and it changes the pH environment. Uh, and by keeping that pH uh, to a certain neutral pH environment, this produces organic acids, acetic and lactic acid. Bingo, acetic acid. Can you guys tell me where acetic acid comes from? Come on. Let's go. Acetic acid. Apple cider vinegar. Bingo. Now, right, right away, apple cider vinegar has a tremendous asset with our gut. It's right there. So moving on, I just want you to understand that when we do not eat correctly, excessive sugars, uh, GMOs uh, for certain people, uh, it can be uh, certain proteins, gluten. But the bottom line is when you're not eating correctly, you're eating lots of refined sugars. Those sugars become toxic. They become inflammatory. And over time, with a poor diet, you start to develop sludge in the colon. Now we eventually can lead to infl inflammation of the mucosa of the GI lining inside, which eventually can lead to a leaky gut. Now, do you guys know what leaky gut syndrome is? Leaky gut syndrome uh, is the leading cause of many, many conditions, many conditions, anywhere from autoimmune to, to, to lupus, from uh, changes in our whole entire immune system. Uh, by the way, what's interesting is that a strong gut and a strong immune system not only will keep you healthy, but what this does is helps increase your killer T cells. And your killer T cells are part of your white blood cells. Your killer T cells is what's fighting these viruses that get into your body. So as you have a weakened gut, you have less killer T cells. So it goes hand in hand. So a strong gut is going to do wonders for your body. Now, there's a lot I can go into the physiology, which I really don't want to. But I do want to say one thing that's very important. 
increased cholesterol, increased triglycerides, all have to do with your gut because your gut and your liver work together. But I can tell you that if you have a sludge gut or a leaky gut or you have a poor diet, we know what it can do. We know that simple sugars lead to excessive fat. Fat stores visceral fat, leads to insulin resistance, leads to diabetes. It leads to placking and inflammation in the arterial walls, inter interior walls of the vessels, which will lead to clogged arteries. But it's also proven that a healthy gut that has good probiotics in it is going to keep your cholesterol low. It's going to keep your triglycerides low. It's the gut is where it starts at. So if you go to your medic and these medical people, many of them throughout the entire world are missing the whole picture. You just don't want to treat your cholesterol and just treat your triglycerides without treating your gut. And every doctor out there should understand more about the gut because it starts in the gut. It all starts in the gut. Not only our immune system, but our physiology of our heart, our cardiovascular system, our entire digestive system, our liver, the way it manufactures cholesterol. Because everything starts in the gut. And I think that's a really important thing. So I'm going to jump around. And there's a lot I want to talk about here, but I don't want to go too deep into it. It's really exciting. We'll save it for another program. But leaky gut syndrome is a very, very common thing. Uh, and then if, you know, if those who get allergies, migraines, uh, all these different types of symptoms, aching in the muscles, this bowel lining that becomes irritated and inflamed, we then develop an overgrowth of yeast, yeast and bacteria. Now, I talk about yeast. Yeast is so big, candida albicans. Yeast the yeast infection for a female, but guys have it too. You just may show, not show the symptoms. Women's have, women who may have uh, yeast or thrush, yes, you may have, you know, problems in your tongue, white tongue, uh, but yeast infections are so important because it feeds on sugar. So you need to cut the sugar down. Your yeast goes away. Remember, those probiotics are there to, to, to win the war. In order to win the war, we got to feed it, which I'll get right back to. I don't want to jump the gun. Uh, so you guys, I appreciate all you guys in the chat room being comfortable here. Don't go anywhere, okay? So let's go ahead and uh, look at one other thing, cytokines. Cytokines, uh, we heard the old cytokine storm, cytokine storm. This is when we get too many pathogens that enter the body at once. Um, it works with the immune system, and cytokines are actually good. They actually help help fight off infections. But when we put too much inflammation in the gut, the cytokines go haywire. That cytokine storm starts causing so many different complications and problems where uh, it becomes overloaded. And as a result of this overloaded storm that goes on our body, we start developing more inflammation, which leads to other conditions. So again, we're going back to inflammation. Remember, every disease known to man is inflammation. I don't care if it's gastritis, bursitis, tendonitis. I don't care if it's uh, colitis. Uh, or, or any other type of itis that goes on the body, it's all related to inflammation. Our objective here is to keep the inflammation down, and that's by having a strong and healthy gut. Okay, a few different ways how to improve our gut. Probiotics, fermented foods. Uh, we're looking at our, 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 our kefir, our keen cheese, our kombucha, our miso, our sauerkraut, our tempeh. Uh, yeah, our yogurts have some. Our, uh, we have different types of uh, kefirs that have different ones. You have drinkable yogurts, by the way, that some of them have very little sugars, but very important, look at the ingredients. I don't want you sucking down those added sugars. So you want to stay away from the sugars because you're going to be contraindicating what you're trying to do. Uh, but on the same token, why do we why do we want the probiotics? Because we want a healthy gut microbiome. This prevents the gut inflammation and other intestinal problems. Now remember, when you have a, a gut that's not happy, you get bloating, you get constipation, get gastritis. You can eventually get acid reflux. The gut is one whole unit that goes from the back of your mouth out the anus. You know, you bite the back of a dog's tail, what happens? Arf! It barks out of its mouth. It's all connected. So when you're having these other intestinal problems, Crohn's disease and all these other conditions, you got to get the inflammation out. You got to get the inflammation out. You cannot keep adding those sugars. And a lot of that processed refined foods is going to make the condition worse. Now, the next important thing, prebiotics. Now, you're saying, what are prebiotics? A lot of people don't know what it is. The prebiotics is what makes the probiotics happy. Your probiotics need prebiotics to feed on. If it's not getting its nutrition, it doesn't grow. Your prebiotics are your fruits and vegetables, your, pro your soluble fibers, 
your garlic, your artichokes, your onions, your whole grains, your bananas, your apples, asparagus, all those soluble fibers, chia seeds, soluble, soluble fiber. Not only is the soluble fiber good for those probiotics, but the soluble fiber is good for your intestines. It's going to make you regular. It's going to lower cholesterol. It's going to lower triglycerides. It's going to sustain normal insulin glucose levels. It's not going to, it's going to take away insulin resistance. It's going to put less stress on your pancreas. It's going to, not going to cause that surge. You're not going to have that surge of insulin in that fall where you're going to get real tired. It's going to lower cholesterol and triglycerides. It's going to help clogged arteries. It's going to help clean your arteries. Soluble fiber, what does it do? Soluble fiber latches on the cholesterol, grabs it, and takes it out of the body. It's like your LDLs, your low-density lipid proteins, too many of those, along with inflammation, is a clock, is a clogged artery fantasy. That's they love that kind of stuff. But you eat better foods, healthier foods, your soluble fibers, you increase your high density lipid proteins, your HDLs. What do they do? The HDLs goes out to the to the vessels. It searches for the LDLs, attaches to them, and to brings them back to the liver and excretes it out of the body. So now you're lowering your LDLs as you're building your HDLs. That's what keeps a healthy heart. So those are your probiotics. I appreciate you chatters just hanging in there. You're doing great. Eat less sugar, eat less sweeteners. Not only talk about sugar, but even your, your artificial sweeteners, you got to be careful. All right. You got to be real careful when it comes to that because the body does not like that kind of stuff. Uh, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on that, but your artificial sweeteners will cause uh, problems in the gut microbiome. All right. It's not going to grow. It's going to rot. We need to re reduce stress. We know what stress does. Stress does affect our, our microbiome. There's no question. We have increased cortisol, increased stressors, increased adrenaline, increased norepinephrine, uh, all these other kind of things cause more problems. It causes glycogen to be released. It causes more insulin, it causes the whole vicious cycle, which causes our pancreas to be exhausted. So you really need to start getting into meditation, deep breathing exercises, any type of progression, progressive muscle relaxation, uh, and exercise. Exercise is a really good thing. Uh, that will definitely reduce your stress levels. If you take an antibiotics, there's another thing that's going to kill your microbiome. You must get on probiotics if you're taking antibiotics. Antibiotics will wipe out all the good bacteria and you're starting all over again. So you got to build it up again. Antibiotics is not really good for it, but those that need it, I understand. Uh, there are certain things we, we got to do, but we need to get through with it. And another thing, you need to make sure you get enough sleep. Those who do not get enough sleep, your inflammatory markers will go up as your cortisol goes up. And that's going to affect not only your gut health, that will affect your cognition, your mood, your, your, your eating habits. And those who do not get enough sleep will be ones where your ghrelin, that's your, your food cravings, your ghrelin is going to go up, your leptin, which is, is your satiety hormone is going to go uh, down. Because if your ghrelin goes up and your leptin goes down, you're going to crave more food. You're going to be craving more sugar. You're going to be craving more sweets. You're going to be eating in the middle of the night. You're going to get up in the morning. You're going to snack in between your meals. You're going to increase crap in your body. And it's not healthy. A very interesting article, 2018 research, shows that those people that spend a lot of time cleaning, using disinfectant cleaners, there is a type of a microbe called C. Lachnospirot C, if I spelled it correctly, but this is a type of a microbe that leads to type 2 diabetes as well as obesity. In those uh, types of disinfectant cleaners, make sure you're having enough ventilation. Wear a mask if you have to. Uh, these can affect your probiotics in your gut, believe it or not. Uh, if you're smoking, you need to get rid of it. This is going to cause more complications and problems. Uh, and that is something important. So uh, let me just go over to a uh, important article right here. If I can pull this out because I know I got everything right on my hands. So what do you eat? Well, we talked about our probiotics and our prebiotics. And again, I'm a big believer. Now think about it. There are diets out there. And, and, and guys, don't go down my throat here. I just want to just kind of keep this really elementary. Diets like the keto diet. Uh, diets, you know, like the, you know, you just want to just eat meat all day long. Uh, there's so many different diets out there, but I'm still going to tell you this. 
there's nothing like getting natural good fiber. There's nothing like getting natural uh, good prebiotics. There's not, nothing like getting natural good fats, like avocados, your nuts, which is heart health. Uh, all that stuff has prebiotics in there. There's lots of fiber. Uh, if you don't eat those type of foods, and that's kind of like a plant-based diet on that side of the spectrum. I'm not saying you have to eat all plant-based. I mean, I'll eat a little meat. I'll eat fish. But you need to have those in your diet. It really will make a huge difference because one of the biggest things with obesity is satiety. And satiety, the reason why I like apple cider vinegar first thing in the morning with a little bit of lemon, it not only prepares the enzymes in our, in our gut, but it keeps you satiated. Another thing I like that, you know, when you're eating and you really want to balance out your insulin levels, have a little cinnamon before you eat. Uh, there's a lot of neat little tricks you can do, and those are some things that you really need to eat. But I'm a big believer that if you have a glass of water about 15 minutes before you eat, you're going to eat less. You're going to eat smarter. You're going to eat wiser. It takes 20 minutes for your stomach to tell your brain that you're full. There's a lot of fast eaters out there. And if you're eating too much, and you're not feeling it. You're going to feel it later, but you're also going to be paying the price by having too much of that excessive fat. So watch what you eat. And that's another thing. Drink plenty of fluids. You can't go wrong with that. And uh, if you don't like just plain water, then, uh, you know, drink your herbal teas. Your, put the some fruits in your water. Just let it sit overnight. Your cucumbers, your peaches, whatever it is. Uh, just do that because water is so important. You know, we're 70% water, our body. And try to limit the alcohol and caffeine, uh, too much caffeine and alcohol work as a diuretic. We're losing too many fluids. And again, your gut needs fluids like all the other cells in your body and try to find some time to relax. So that takes us to our last thing. These are ways to naturally cleanse the colon. And I'm not going to go into anything too complex, but I can promise you if you do these simple things, they will really, really help you. The first thing is a water flush. Water flush exactly is what it says. So it's just taking water, uh, you know, uh, your fruits and vegetables, your watermelons, your tomatoes, you can put celery or even lettuce in it, whatever it is, and just drink your water. It's one of the best cleanses you can do. It's one of the simplest. People think you have to do all these fancy cleanses by putting doing enemas and putting stuff up your behind. Guys, enemas only go up so far. Come on. This is not colonic irrigation where they're kind of... Mm -hmm. They're not pumping the pump up your rectum. Enemas aren't going to go that far up. So uh, the other thing is a saltwater flush. I really like this. Uh, taking uh, a little bit of like Himalayan salt or even sea salt. I like the Himalayan. You can use either or. Take like two teaspoons of lukewarm, lukewarm water or if it's one teaspoon if you're really paranoid on salt. But the Himalayan salt works a lot different than just table salt. Uh, but drink it quickly. You'll see in a few minutes, your, your, your gut will start making all kinds of noise. It will put you on the can. So if you're constipated, that's a great thing to really cleanse. Uh, you may want to try that. High fiber diet, again, your fruits, vegetables, grains, nuts, seeds, all those kind of things, your chia seeds, your flax seeds, all those things are really, really important. Uh, if you don't go high fiber, um, and you're just eating all meat, you're not eating fiber, you're going to develop diverticulitis, diverticulosis. Uh, you need fiber, guys. You really need fiber, guys and ladies. I'm sorry. Um, we all need fiber. You know how many people are constipated that don't go regularly as part of your life because you're not eating correctly? So really uh, start doing that. Now, if it's something that you don't like doing what I said, juice, smoothies, throw your, uh, your chia seeds in there. Uh, throw your, you can put some nuts, walnuts in there. Get your healthy fats. Uh, but if you have to add a little bit of lemon juice or apple juice or vegetable juice or whatever it is, uh, add your fiber in there and you won't taste it. Just drink it down. I like I like chia seeds, guys. I think it's a great thing. Resistive, resistant chart starches, resistant starches are also good, uh, like your green uh, bananas, your grains. And don't say, don't go crazy on me. I understand grains are okay as long as you don't overdo it because grains are omega-6. Omega-6 can be inflammatory. Uh, but your resistant starches, uh, your like potatoes, uh, legumes, your green bananas that aren't ripe yet because the, the riper a banana gets, the sweeter it gets, all right, and the more sugar. So for those that are looking to cut it down, that's another thing. But one great thing I want to tell you is that if you uh, don't have a lot of fiber in the food and it's more sugary, 
add another food that has fiber. Add it, mix it with chia seed. The body doesn't know the difference. As long as there's soluble fiber with the sugar, it's going to slow the absorption rate in the small intestine, and that you're not going to have that that crazy surge. And again, those probiotic supplements, as we talked about before, if you have it, if you just tuned in, you'll go back to the beginning of the video and listen again. Uh, I love apple cider vinegar. It's considered a probiotic. Includes uh, we do this in colon cleanses. The enzymes and acids in apple cider vinegar uh, contains uh, great things. It has a suppressed. Uh, it, it it supposedly suppresses the bad bacteria. It has it the mother. If you do drink apple cider vinegar, have it with the mother. The murky stuff in the bottom. It can do wonderful things. And herbal teas are also great. Uh, there's a lot of different things. I like even adding like ginger, garlic, cayenne pepper. These are great antimicrobial phytochemicals. And these are thought to suppress bad bacteria. And this is good to know, guys. Uh, your cayenne pepper, garlic, and ginger are known to suppress it. And your laxative herbs, if you wanted to really get your intestine moving really good, is your psyllium, your aloe vera, your marshmallow root, as well as your slippery elm. We talked about that recently, a slippery elm. This helps with constipation, and that is something that you want to do. But one of the biggest things with constipation uh, is lack of fluids, lack of water. Well, guys, I think I nailed it. 22 minutes in, I want to thank all of you guys. And, and again, today we're not taking uh, any uh, people up on the platform today because this will be back on my channel like right away. Please share it. And if you've not tuned in, I mean, I'm sorry, you are tuning in. But if you've not subscribed, please do so because there are two things. I always will tell you the same thing that I care about. I just want to see you and your family healthy obviously, and your loved ones and friends. And all we want to do is just give you the right material information, lay it out so you can make the right decisions. We need to be proactive in our life. We need to stay healthy. We need to stay strong. We need to keep these muscles up. We need to exercise and really watch that gut, guys, because, and girls, if that gut continues to grow, that visceral fat is going to lead to a lot of metabolic issues, metabolic syndrome issues, and take it very seriously because that gut can lead to one, lots of problems. Uh, so really start getting on the ball, and I really hope I can motivate you to do so. Uh, that's all I ask. Otherwise, I want to say God bless to each and every one of you. I appreciate every one of you. I love you, and just stay proactive, stay healthy, and most of all, make it a great day.